All right, let's get growing here, Coach. How you doing today? Oh, All right. Hey, um, uh, C uh, CP injured reserve. Uh, is he? Uh, uh, what's his status? Yeah, we'll just you know talk to to him and the doctors and we'll see uh, you know what the plan is on Wednesday. Uh, and uh, Terrell and Hopkins, any updates? Uh, I hope they'll get them back. But hopeful again. Uh, see how that looks by Wednesday, and if they're. Um, Trending like they could be ready, they'll be out there. Uh, any, I didn't have anything, uh, um, anything out of the game. From no, yesterday. came away uh, pretty clean, thankfully. You know, a couple bumps and bruises, but um, pretty clean. And uh, you know, uh, dust kind of settled. Uh, any reflections on on that wild game and uh, what you had to talk to the team about today? Moving forward on to uh, the Chargers. Yeah, the second game. There's a lot of stuff we can certainly learn from. Uh, we could be cleaner. Um, same way I felt yesterday afterwards. I mean, that was a crazy game, and uh, thankful we came away with the win. What was the family reaction when you got home? Uh, some anger about uh, don't do that to them. Um, just kind of disbelief. Probably the reaction of most people, most fans. Range of emotions. <laughs> but uh, thankful we, like I said, sometimes you need a little bit of luck and things bounce their way. Or, we were able to finish that and, and come away with a win. How do you deal with that as a coach on the sideline? I mean, just the opposite. You've got to stay into it. I mean, it's no matter what you're really feeling inside, I mean, you've got to make decisions and you can't lose your mind. You've got to be neutral. I mean, there's a lot of decisions you had to make. And thing changes on a whim. You know, it goes from the Hail Mary, there's still enough time. You're looking, you got a timeout. You're thinking about possible chunk plays you need to call. And, and you know what you're going to get, and then you got to make the decision that you take it then or take it on the extra point. Like I said, we took it there, and thankfully it broke our way. Is that the, one of the bigger adjustments you had to make from a coordinator to a head coach? Having yeah, you can't just worry about when the balls. Absolutely, right? but that's why you know you you, you uh, we have a good staff, and that's why you have great communication. The headset, you know, between upstairs and guys on the sideline, so everybody's got a job to do, and so. As you're talking through, say, "Hey, look, we gotta get ready for this possible scenario." You know, there, most of it you've you've practiced before, but you're in it and you're making sure everybody's good, personnel-wise and strategy, because even as a play caller, what you were gonna call if you thought you were down by one, you're in the game plays and having a timeout to try to get who out there to kick a game winner, and then when you realize you're tied, you know, you take a shot. We took a shot. You know, that's a different play, and. Um, you know, in overtime, and then you're getting your overtime thoughts, and there's a lot that goes on there. Uh, what was the decision to use the penalty on the extra point? Was there numbers backing that up, or was it just a yeah, numbers? Field? Okay. Um, you know, that's when you you look at it and you prepare, and then that was the percentage. I mean, he had had a history of missing some kicks in that range, and that's ultimately what swayed it for me. The stats said that. Well, that P.J. Walker said since they started counting this air yards thing, 67 yards long this one. Did you think he was going to throw the ball that deep when you no. were watching that play unfold? Absolutely not. Because the situation you're in, at that point, you're just trying to keep it in bounds, get him to check it down. Obviously, you'd love to get a sack, but you're going, do you do you drop out of there? You know, do you rush for? Do you want to simulate pressure? I mean, those are all decisions you got to make in the way the game was going and where the ball was. That you're playing on a – hopefully get him to check it down, tackle him in bounds, get the clock moving. We've all seen that story when he rolled out to the left and went to launch it. And that's what we got to, no matter what, we got to stay behind that. There, there's, that's uh, pretty obvious there. But when he turned to throw it, I didn't think that ball was going to get there. I thought it was going to fall short, and I thought maybe we had a chance to pick it. But made an incredible throw. I know what the, what was that next gym was like 67. It looked longer than that. <laughs> like his front foot left at the, uh, maybe we got to audit next gen. Is where his front foot was when he when, the, when he launched that ball. Um, he hit that thing on a rope. How, how much in tune are you to like the emotions after a play like that? Emotions of guys on the field on the sideline. You can feel it behind you, but you know it, it changed on you. I mean, yeah. I mean, no, nobody. It's not a, a great feeling when you see it happen, but the, you, you've got to be aware. There's still time. You got to got to coach the whole game. I mean, you can't just become deflated no matter how you whatever emotion you feel, because it just, on a whim, Jeff, you know, you make the play. It, it, you can't let it snowball on you because there's still time left in the game. And then you're, you know, you're weighing, you see the flag. I saw him take his helmet off. I saw the flag. And then that's when you start thinking, all right, 
I'm going to use it here, use it on the kick, you, kickoff. It, it, obviously, I'll ask you both that. Do you, you both ask, do you, do you say anything to guys like, hey, I want to take them out because we got to get ready for the next game? Or yeah, there's just still time on the board. Right. And, you, you know, you can sit there and I hit it and I could say something to Marcus and I could say something to Dave McCone about, hey, look, get this ready because this is the situation you thought you're going to be in. You got to prepare that he's going to make that extra point even when you, you move him back just to be prepared to, to work the end of the game situation. Uh, what has pleased you most about the CN Tour games? Uh, the resiliency. You know, the guys that are, uh, like I said, it's been far from perfect. Uh, usually it's not perfect in the NFL, but just the guys that the belief and, you know, some of the obstacles we've been able to overcome so far. Um, certainly we're not celebrating thinking that we, you know, we've done anything special, but it's the reality is we've, we've been able to overcome some things that have been in our control that we, you know, we didn't, didn't go our way early in the year. And then to go on the road to Seattle, um, like I said, at the time, I, that's a good football team. That's a tough place to play. And to be able to bounce back after, after LA and get that win and then come home and playing better at home. And, uh, but we're going to have a huge challenge, we know, with the Chargers, but just the resiliency of this team. Could you see things playing out the rest of the season like this? I mean, the way things are going in the division, the way you guys are at these up and down moments, it just, it just might be that kind of year. Certainly, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, you've seen so many, I mean, you, you've covered this game a long time. You know, even the teams that get out ahead and you start six and one, you've seen teams collapse and you've seen teams that only have two, three wins and they go on a run, seven or eight wins in a row. And we just need to continue to improve. I mean, we got a lot of things we got to fix as most teams do. And, um, but yeah, I expect this thing to go all the way to the end of the season. You spent a lot of time uh, talking about the offense for the first eight weeks. Uh, numbers for the defense for the first eight weeks. Last in yards allowed, second to last in yards per play, third to last in third down conversion by opponent, and fifth to last in points. I only say that just to say that we spent so much time talking about the offense. The defense started to become a concern to you as far as what is happening. I mean, you take it, as it you know, objectively. Obviously, you know, what happens is, you know, there's times where like a game like yesterday, you start out all right, and then you start to give up. And there's a lot of different reasons why on some of the critical situations as the game went on that we didn't do a, a good enough job. And uh, it's not just one guy. It's not just one scheme. But it's our job as coaches to problem solve. And then, you know, what, what happens, you get in certain games. And like we gave up a lot of yards in the Niners game. And those were kind of like, who cares? You know, we had a 14-point lead, and they went the whole distance of the field and came with no points. So that adds to some of that. Um, the Cincinnati game, I mean, it wasn't good enough. And, you know, we ran into a buzzsaw there. And that's get you, get you in that sum. So you're in a halfway point, and you get in a game like yesterday, and they get 70 yards on a, on a crazy play. And then you get it. I mean, it just wasn't, we know it wasn't good enough. But there's, that's the reality. And we got to make sure we, we problem solve. There's a lot of things we can do to help that even in the other phases. The way that Dean and Rashawn played that final pass to DJ Moore, did that, was that what you guys coached in terms of how they approached it, or were those errors there? On Is that a real question? Well, I don't think it's not. I mean, give, me a, give me a real question, I'll give you a real answer. No, that's not Dean, a real question. What Dean was explaining. Those are the, that's a classic loaded question. It's a cover two. Obviously, nobody's ever coaching anything at safety, whether you're in cover three, or cover four, or cover two, two man. Whatever you want to call it, two invert, two slice. Uh, you, you're deep as the deepest. So he got back there, and it, regardless of the call. So um, is that your question? Well, my question was: Dean was explaining it to us on a daily basis that he was kind of keeping away from the sideline because, in all, you guys wanted to keep it in bounds. That's is, what I was trying to get. Is, the reality is, nobody thought he was going to launch it 70 yards. Regardless, you can't let somebody get behind you. That's the best way. He was saying he was taking a calculated risk, thinking he was going to come back to that sail route that was coming in. But again, you got to stay deeper than deepest, no matter what the coverage is if you're back there. He knows that, but he was trying to explain his thought why he didn't. He didn't think the guy was going to turn around 35 and launch that thing on a rope 70 yards or 67.8. Um, that's what he was saying.
Was there anything from yesterday's game that you felt like the team did consistently well through all four quarters? Get another loaded question. I mean, there's a lot of things. It's an NFL game. There's always a good. There's always some bad. And there's always some ugly. You just make sure you don't have a lot of ugly on there and, and, and try to minimize the bad. But there's a lot of good things going around. There's a lot of stuff we got to clean up. And that's the reality every week. Uh, at the end of the day, somehow, some way, we found a way to, to come away with more points. And uh, we're thankful we got the win. But it doesn't stop our mindset. We, we've got to improve. And we know the challenge coming in this Sunday. We got a team that's coming off a bye. Uh, you know, arguably but one of the best young quarterbacks in the league. And we, we got to be ready to roll in all three phases. Why, why do you feel like your special teams has been so productive this year? Well, I mean, there are a lot of reasons. One, you're in the second year in the system, and when you got a lot of young, explosive players, there's a lot of length and size out there. I mean, D'Angelo Malone mm -hmm. and Troy Anderson, Lorenzo Carter, and Felipe Franks, it's a lot of size and spe speed, youth, and length out there cover a lot of ground. I mean, we almost got another punt yesterday. Troy uh, was close. Um, that's what helps when you're building depth and the type of players you're bringing in that eventually probably be starters or whatever, and you want to continue to make sure you've got depth on that roster. And I think that we've done a good job. That's part of the team building strategy as well. You mentioned, you mentioned, uh, so you mentioned size on special teams. Is that something that when you when Marquise is making decisions or you and Marquise are making decisions? Well, it's the way we built the defense. So if you want to have, again, there's a lot of different philosophies. If you're going to be a 4-3, you're going to play a lot of four down. Uh, sub package, you know, where a lot of people do now. They, they essentially are playing a 4-3 defense. You can call it a 4-4 and playing, you know, a big nickel and where you only got two traditional linebackers behind the ball. You may just, you may be drafted a lot more for speed. If you're more of a zone team, vision break. If you're more of a 3-4, you're going to have a little bit better, bigger size on special teams just by the nature of who you're drafting and where you're getting those special teams contributions from. Ideally, you'd like to have a lot of them come out of your outside linebacker room, inside linebacker room, and, and hopefully you're getting some uh, help from your tight end room as well, just with size. And then we've got, you know, Kadero Hodge, I think, is one of the better gunners. I think Mike Ford is too. So you're getting contributions from them. It allows you to different personnel inside on your punt team. And, and when you combine that with youth, length, and speed, um, the guys that can play in space, that usually helps your coverage unit. So it's all part of the team building, like what you want to be defensively and offensively that can help your teams. It's all part of a, of a strategy as, as you merge it together. And then it goes with the football staff and, and everything. Coach, can you express the uh, dimension that Demir Bird has brought to the team, a guy who's you know, on his yeah. fifth team and had trouble sticking in the league and well, been through that. some stuff. I know you like sure. people like that. Yeah, he's taken advantage of his opportunity, right? He's been, he's been in, in our program, he's worked extremely hard. Um, wasn't getting a lot of snaps early in the year. When his number's been called lately, he's been making plays for us. Um, and made a huge play. And not just, but you could tell sometimes too when you got the ability to take the top off, and then they may give you a cushion, which he had on that, that touchdown he scored. Mm -hmm. He was able to snap down, come back. Did a great job with the run after catch. Kyle made a good decision. You know, when he come in there and underrated, it's kind of a no brainer, but he's able to make the smart play there, and Drake's able to finish, no one to let go, and, and Demir was able to put his foot in the ground and score. Had a lot more success passing in kind of off structure situations. Uh, I don't know if that lines up with what you saw in film. Uh, I just remember there was one to break kind of toward the end. There was one to yeah, that was the one that was off schedule. A lot of the stuff too we were doing, and that's part of the game plan. And we showed something we hadn't in a while. Uh, and the things we were doing with some of the motions and clearing it out, he was able to progress and get down to him. Some of them were progressions like the one he hit to Hesse, the one he hit to Oz, the one he hit to Kyle. In the flat. Uh, now the one to Drake was off schedule, and um, but that's that was a good job. I mean, I thought our tackles played really well yesterday. They kept them clean. And like I said when they rush and they kind of try to rush you down the middle or heavy, he was able to get out and extend that play and flip his hips around. And, and Drake did a nice job coming back to him on that one for sure. I thought he made some good plays on that play action. The one he had to Kyle on the first touchdown drive and the and the, the pop pass we hit Kyle on. So there's a lot of different actions. I mean, even the one he had on the keeper kind of got, got us going too. Uh, I believe it was to Bird. Burns was chasing him down and able to, to make that throw on the run. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways. Uh, certainly may have looked that way, the way he was playing in the pocket. I thought he progressed pretty well though too. I was wondering if that indicates anything to you <laughs> it's encouraging to see Very him encouraging. make those plays. Yeah. Very encouraging. I know you focus so much week to week because of the opponent and things change. 
But do you are you the kind of coach that takes stock in where you started, where you are? You plead like are there areas you look like we're ahead of schedule, we're behind schedule with things, or you're not in that. Yeah, I don't know if it's ahead of schedule. No, it's a good question, but it's it's more about the progress, right? right? And uh, and anticipating how you know, I mean, you're you're an idiot if you think somebody's not going to adapt to you. And you're you're arrogant. Either one's a good look. So you know you know if you're having success in the run game, okay, what are you doing well? well you, well, they're going to make damn sure to try to stop that. Okay, what are you going to do to counter that? That's what I was pleased with yesterday. I thought we were able to counter some of that and showed some different things that I thought helped us. It certainly wasn't perfect. Uh, so you're always, yeah, tracking your progress. There's always stuff we got to work on. Kind of along those lines, you have a lot of new players again, like last year. You mm -hmm. got a lot of guys in one-year contracts again, like last year. Why do you think, how do you think you've had the level of buy-in that you've had that a lot of teams that, rebuild and that's kind of thing. They all say the same thing, but sometimes they're not four and four take games in the season. Why, why do you think it's worked here so far? Yeah, I mean, I've got my theories, but I don't want to sit there and, and sound like I'm trying to like pat myself or pat all of us on the back. You know, we just got a lot of good guys and um, we've got a, a stable situation and then hopefully we can continue on this path. Your theories, you think sometimes other teams jump at money situations more, the names more than? Yeah, I can only uh, give you an answer, but my mindset without trying to sound like I'm trying to pump my own tires here, um, I don't know. You know, I can't, I can't, I can't get inside somebody else's head, Jeff. Are you pleased with the culture you've created here that allows yes. guys to buy in? Yes. What, how would you describe that culture so far? It's something we work on every day. You know, a lot of people, you know, you can put it on a slogan, you can put it, you know, chirp to you guys about it. But if you're not implementing that day after day, that's the hardest part. It's like anything in life. Can you implement every day? Not going to be perfect. Can you persevere? Can you be consistent? Those things. And whatever your belief is, there's a lot of ways to do it. There's a lot of, it works for some places, it works for others. But I think a lot of things what happens is the day to day grind and the lack of endurance people have sometimes. Um, you think, hey, it worked for you early. You can that it's it's good. Like you check, like you're asking that check that box. But no, it's something every damn day you got to work on. Did certain organizations you were exposed to, either directly or indirectly, impress you with the culture and the way they handle things? And and yeah, some places, that, you know, organizations you study, um, whether it's a, in other sports or other lines of business. Um, you know, some of the experiences sometimes you learn of what not to do. Or if you ever get a shot, and sure as hell won't do that. Um, so many sometimes you, you take it all into account. Because one of the things your players have said a lot is we talked about resiliency. You've mentioned it. Is that something that can be taught, or is that just when you're looking for guys, you're able to figure that out that they might have that? Like, how does that it's both. manifest? Both. You know, it's um, like if you want to be a physical team, you know, you look for physical players. Um, I'm not a I'm not a doctor, and I can't do a heart transplant. So you try to find the right, right people, and you try to foster the right climate, and and get the right type of guys. Um, but it's both, you know. There's, there's. But if somebody doesn't want to do it that way, you're probably not changing. I mean, so how do you foster that within a locker room? Is it literally? The, are there, are there things you're able to? pick up either on a draft process or a free agency process that tells you that, or is it? Yeah, and there's a lot of, there's a lot that goes into it. Is, is, um, yeah, I mean, there's things that you look for, not only on tape, but, you know, when you're doing your, all the evaluations, the interviews, and it's a long, thorough process. Again, you're not gonna, not gonna be right every time, and you're trying to minimize your risk, and, and that's something, like I said, you gotta work on every day as a, as a collective group, too. Maybe you work on that as a collective. Well, I'm not going to take you behind what we do every day. No matter how you're trying to lead me into there, I'm not that. <laughs> I appreciate the loaded questions. I just try to make sure I don't fall for it. No, that one wasn't loaded, but you're trying to lead me into it like I'm a witness and you're the uh, prosecutor. So I appreciate the hustle, Mike, but I'm not going to keep going. We have a list of questions for your prospects that you could share a few of them with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I may put you guys through it. Uh, that'll be an off season project. We'll do a, a eval. See how it goes, and then you guys can interview me on the same questions. We'll see where we where we end up. <laughs> I think that's. I think we should do that.
be a good challenge. <laughs> Did you uh, look at the uh, replay of the non-call on Demir Bird at the end of the game? Again. I like your Halloween costume. I like I like your Halloween costume. Okay. I love your Halloween costume. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, you're back. Yeah. 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 You gotta wake up and you need some coffee. We got some right there. Hey, the Chargers coming off the bye week. You know, everybody knows about the quarterback and Williams and Eckler. Uh, Bose is out, I guess, on defense. What are some of the challenges that the, the four and three Chargers are presenting to you? Yeah, like I said earlier, I mean, uh, Herbert, I don't know if there's a better quarterback on, you talk about critical down situations. Uh, he's a guy that can extend plays, live arm. He's going to be a challenge. And, you know, we got to come up with a good plan and we got to play well in all three phases. Yeah, so you got Khalil Mack, you know, the, the issue with Mack. Getting into too many obvious passing situations, he can be a nightmare. It's a good scheme. They're coming off a bye. Um, like I said, glad we're at home. Looking forward to it, but it'll be a hell of a challenge.